Hi, I'm Chris Schultz, co-host of Esoterica, the podcast. Welcome to our one-on-one -on -one segment, something new that we're doing exclusively for our YouTube channel. And this is just when Aaron and I, or I, um, find somebody that we're interested in talking to one-on-one. -on -one. And um, it's not something that really fits into our standard episodes, so we're trying some um, new content here. So for our debut episode, uh, I'm going to have a conversation with Julie Anderson. I first became aware of Julie on her TikTok account, where she uh, has become a spokesperson for Gen X and delivers this um, that amazing, energetic, um, upbeat content um, that just really has been a big part of my day. So um, I can't really do a good job describing her. I'm going to let her speak for herself in this little clip. So take a look. Okay, this is another thing about Gen X. Is this, are we the only ones that are saying balls still? Like going balls out. I use that all the time. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's dying. So that's Julie Anderson. She shows up in my feed. I started following her and she's a, uh, someone I really enjoy watching every day. So I said to myself, hey, let's talk to this person and find out more about her. Um, so one of the things, um, I'm going to admit right off the bat is that I was really only aware of her uh, Gen X um, TikTok content. There is so much more to Julie, um, and I was really amazed to find out more about her, both in talking to her and um, looking into her link tree after that. I'm going to admit I didn't do my research before the interview, and I truly regret that. And I, uh, although Julie was a delight to talk to, I was a pretty crappy interviewer. So um, I stress. I can't stress enough that if you enjoy the content that you're about to see, make sure you go out and, and check her out. Um, see all the other stuff she's up to. She's really amazing, um, enthusiastic uh, person. So um, check out this interview. I hope you enjoy. And um, like and subscribe if you do. And hopefully we'll um, see more content from us in the future on our One by One series. So here we go. Welcome to Esoteric of the Podcast's new one-on-one. -on -one. I'm your host, Chris Schultz, and with me tonight is Julie Anderson. Julie, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm great. So the first thing I want to say is, you know, I, I'm an old fart. I'm a Gen Xer, like you said, <laughs> trying to be relevant. I'm on TikTok, um, and, and I get the platform. I, I get what's going on. I, I found you and you're the one thing in my feed, like I mostly, honestly, my algorithm is 95% cat videos. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but every time I come across you, like you, you get this amazing personality. You're always laughing. It's like, it's the highlight of my feed. You always get a laugh out of me. Um, so tell me, <laughs> who are you? Other than so who, who am I? Right. So, um, uh, I was, and I still would hopefully have contract work. I go up to um, a First Nations reserve in Bella Bella, British Columbia, and I'm a literacy movement coordinator, but it's like a wide, it's kind of like I'll go there and I'll do whatever needs to be done. And that was what I was doing before the pandemic hit. And so what I did is um, I was already on TikTok, but I just went like full on into TikTok when this happened because I was trying to deal with like my loss of employment and like, it just really rattled me. And just with everything going on, I just really, I could just feel, I could see other people suffering too. So I thought, what can I do um, to help people? Cause I knew that's going to help me as well. It's, sometimes it's like a defense mechanism. It's like a distraction to get you to move forward. And I knew that, but I knew it was also going to help me sort of like get traction and get my own poop in a group. Right. And so what I did is I started going live like two hours every day on TikTok, on top of what I already do on Facebook, on, on Instagram, but I would read for 45 minutes and I'd have um, friends that would moderate the lives because a lot of people just come on and they're just, you know, leaving rude comments. So they would just like kick those people out. Mm -hmm. And um, because that was my role was literacy. So I thought, well, I can read to people because it's soothing. It's nice. They can sort of chat with each other in the community. And then for the next 45 minutes, I would do um, just a chill session. We would have a topic and we would just discuss it. And I had a, like, I was working with like a core group of people that we just sort of all found each other, the magic of TikTok. And one of my friends, she just, she made up this schedule. So we would have a topic every day of the week that we would talk about, be like therapeutic Thursday, things like that. And then, so we'd talk for 45 minutes. And then for the last half an hour, we'd, I do something called the emoji game. And I still do that now. I do this. I, I just did this right before this, this interview. So it's like, a, it's a game. I'll call out an emoji and everybody tries to drop the emoji in the comments and they, they get all excited and they swipe into somebody else's live. 
And so that's what I've done. I've just, and then also started to just creating tons and tons of content. So that's sort of it. I got lots of other stuff to do, but I don't want to keep like going on and on, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Like, I mean, I, I have to admit, like I, I started getting on TikTok because my, I have a 14 year old daughter and and that's their thing. And um, I, I actually did not understand, like, there's that much you can do with it. that You can actually be on a 15 or a 60 second clip. That's, that's pretty amazing. So I, nice. I so you're working with um, First Nation people. How is, how has the pandemic been um, affecting you guys up? Because you're, you're North, you're Canada, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm in Alberta, um, Southern Alberta, Canada. So it's been like, um, like lots of people lost their jobs, right? And it's been a lot of um, people grappling with, you know, first off, like the wave of, do you wear a mask or do you not wear a mask? So I think it's sort of like everywhere, just from what I've experienced and I've observed, is that it wasn't standard, like what you should or shouldn't do. So there was a lot of uncertainty. So then there's that, people carry that uncertainty around with them. And then there's just, so it's just a hot mess. It's like, it's like ever, it's just, a, it's like a hot mess. So for me, like I'm lucky because where I live, I'm like, I'm in, I'm in the mountains. It's a very small community. I'm, I can go outdoors. I go hiking and that's what I would do. I just, just for my mental health, you know, just go out. We're not on like in-house lockdown, like some other places are. So there's that, but yeah, it's, it's tough, man. Glad that you have something to do. I mean, your your southern neighbors, the U.S. You've seen how we kind of like shit ourselves the last couple of months. Things really? are going crazy yeah, down yeah. here. Yeah. Um. So that's I, I I mentioned off camera. I was up in Vermont. My sister just moved up there, and I'm like, I think I have an escape route now if uh, if we can't get our act together down here. This is crazy. Head north. Right. The zombies freeze. So I've always heard the north is the where to go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so you have um, also become sort of um, a, an impromptu spokesperson for Generation X, which uh, I would have to say is the greatest generation ever. In my, I agree. <laughs> I got to agree with you there. It is the greatest generation ever. <laughs> we've got a lot of firsts that were not good firsts to overcome, and I, I think we've kind of owned it. Um, what... I'm going to have to ask you some of your favorite 80 stuff. Um, Saturday morning cartoon. Saturday morning cartoon. I don't, you know, I don't even remember Saturday morning, but I remember Flint. I like the Flintstones. The Flintstones. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, breakfast cereal. Were you a sugar cereal person or? Oh yeah. It was the Apple Jack. Apple Jacks. I can't even believe you just triggered, you unlocked a memory there, man. <laughs> there's that. a jingle that goes along with that but i don't remember how it goes i don't either <laughs> that's the other thing with aging not so gracefully it's so i always say it's like i don't know and i don't know if i'm wearing pants either right <laughs> it's like, yeah, dude, if i'm here it's good and it's like one out of ten isn't that <laughs> i know I, I was furloughed for like 10 months um, and it spent a lot of time on Zoom. And when I first had to go to back to work, the like the idea of putting pants on again was difficult. Like, I mean, I got to go out and like be social. Yeah, it's like an ordeal. It's like, this is like pressed upon you. Like I, I need to actually, <laughs> it's almost like this resentment. Like I need to get dressed, you know, you feel, you know, I, I totally understand. <laughs> but it is amazing too. I, I think at the same time, how quickly we adapt to a, 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 a new normal, if you will. Um, interact, interfacing with people on the computer, which, you know, something, I mean, at least when I was a kid, it was science fiction. Mm -hmm. And it didn't seem like a big leap to get here. Mm -hmm. like now we're just, this is what we're doing and we're having some fun. And you have, uh, one of the things that really strikes me about your, uh, your TikTok, you have an amazing amount of energy and enthusiasm. <laughs> How do you keep that energy going? It's on it. So honestly, it has really been um, me being authentic. That's been like what sort of opened everything up. So, you know, there's a process, you know, as we get older and we, you know, we grapple with, you know, different things of our identity, we face our demons, things like that. I, I, I faced uh, like a lot of things that I was um, like, you know, over 20 years ago, I tried to kill myself. And then I started to like put a lot of things pieces together and I hid a lot I had a lot of shame and I buried it down 
and I started to like accept these like pieces of myself again. And it was like in that acceptance that has been like, it's like I'm a nuclear reactor. I just keep feeling more and more, more and more energy, the more I'll, I allow myself to be authentic. And I know it can sound kind of like, oh, really? Like that's, that's it. That's really how it feels. And I, I mean, I can see it. Like I can like put it out. I can crank out the content. I feel really good. So, I mean, that's what, that's what works for me. Yeah. I, I see a lot of people, you know, I, I, I think some of us have a tendency to hide um, our, our true selves or what, you know, what we feel our true selves and, and other people tend to put on acts to try to be more popular. Um, I don't even know you and just watching your stuff, you can tell it's completely genuine. Yeah. And, and energy doesn't lie, right? Like energy, it doesn't lie. And it's infectious, like in a good way. I hate to use that word when we're in the middle of a pandemic, but you know, that, like that's what I like hitting across, across it. I'll, I'll watch a video, you're laughing, you're giving a high five. And I'm like, I, I'm like, I feel good after that. It's that's good. That's good. Stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. That's what it's about. Right. And it's, and it spreads. It's like everything, everything can spread negativity, poopy pants, and also positivity. And I get something out of it too, because it's extremely challenging, right? Cause it's very, it's, it starts to be different when you start to get more followers and people start listening to what you have to say, you're showing up for other people now, you know, and it's, it gives you more of a, like incentive to become better, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's so interesting. It's so interesting. Any advice for people who are starting out and, um, you know, trying to put themselves out there, whether, whatever their social media platform be. Um. Absolutely. Listen to your instincts. Do not listen to the gurus. Listen to your instincts. And the sooner that you can start listening to your instincts and tuning other people out, the faster you're going to grow. And, and I, I would, I would add to that, like, do what's, what's true to you. It's, yeah. Um, I know we've done that with our show. We've, we've, we've looked at our analytics. We try to do stuff every now and then to, to get, you know, more listeners or viewers. But at the end of the day, I just want to do something that I enjoy doing, which is. Yeah. And then that attracts the right people to you too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to be having fun doing what you're doing. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I, I promised I was going to keep this short. Um, uh, it, it, and it does sound like you're actually doing more lengthy content. So maybe I'm misjudging our audience, but um, this is our first time out. We're trying to do a little sound bite. So I want to uh, thank you for coming on. Um, if people want to follow you, um, you are Julie Anderson 426 on TikTok. That's right. Um, any other social media you want to shout out or should that be worth I'm all over the place. You can pretty much find me like through TikTok. TikTok. I've got my links up on my link tree on my bio. You can find me. But I'm on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on YouTube. So you can find me wherever. <laughs> Ask someone, and they'll know in the TikTok community because everybody knows each other, right? <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for coming on. Um, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. You're you're an awesome spokesperson for Gen X. You know we have a reputation as being the meh generation. So thank you for the enthusiasm. You love you're it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.